Hi everybody. Well, in the building process of my PT-19 gas plane, I had to decide on a very reliable radio and servos. My trusty DX6i radio was my choice for the transmitter, but what I found out may shock you. When many folks started talking about the $12 orange receivers, I had to buy some to see what the buzz was all about. So I went ahead and ordered some BECs and some servos. So when they came, I decided to test all of them. Well, here are the results of my range test, comparisons, and etc. You know, from what you see, you can make your own opinion. Well, many of you seen my range check, where I put the transmitter in the can to test it. But you know, you can also put your receiver in the can to test it, and especially if you've got the uh, range checking ability built into your transmitter like there is on this. I'm going to show you what I found out because I bought three of these orange receivers, okay? And I put the one on here and I was going to use this in my PT-19, not sure at this point, okay? Because I haven't done the other part of the test yet. The other part of the test is over here on my night flying F-18 Tiger, I have been flying the AR-500. It has the longer uh, D, uh, antenna on it. I've removed it and I'm going to go ahead and give the same test, range test, to that receiver as to these orange receivers. First of all, I've been using the 3 amp BEC, this UBEC battery eliminator circuit, that's what that stands for, for several hours, dressing it, loading it, all the servos, on off cycling, etc. It has not missed a beat. So thumbs up for that one. I uh, bought five of these Turnigy servos uh, from Hobby King. And I'm disappointed that uh, two of them don't work. So uh, because of that, I've gone back and I put plugs on all of my old standard servos from back in the day when we made stuff that worked. Here's a look inside both the new Turnigy and the old craft servos for those who've never seen one inside. The principle of using a feedback pot and varying the pulse width to make the servo move has remained pretty much the same for most standard servos over the years like these. The biggest difference is that the newer servos use SMT or surface mounted technology. One of the Turnigy servos didn't work at all and I noticed no wires unsoldered when opening it so I don't know what's wrong with that. Throw it away I guess because it's too expensive to return it for warranty with shipping. The other one moved only when I squeezed the case. Most of the problems in the servos today are the feedback pot. Here, if you see inside the Turnigy servo, you'll see the pot is glued in and there's no access. On the other hand, inside the Kraft KPS-15 is a very robust carbon pot with gold wipers. One of the cool things about these uh, setup was uh, on the pot here that you could actually loosen the screws and rotate that left to right. That would take care of your sub trims and that would center your servos. You see, the Kraft servos were very robust, strong, good strong gears, a real bolt to a brass insert with square uh, lugs so the uh, servo wheel absolutely cannot slip no matter what. Okay, let's go ahead and test the orange receivers versus the AR500 and see what happens. You can hear the servos in there running. No, I've got more than one transmitter here. And guess what? Here's what I found. My green transmitter spectrum does not have as much range as my red one. And uh, I'm just going to show you that right now. We've got it on the test. Range check. I've got nothing there. All right, we're all bound up with the red transmitter. Let's cover that up, everything's the same. Put the range check switch on. At my back door, and I still have full, not a single glitch with the AR500. Obviously this transmitter has more range. I'm going to check the other two now, the orange receivers, and see what happens. Let's try this one. Orange receiver number one. On. Wow, 
lost it right there. Five feet. Range check. Here we go. Oh, in the fringe area here. In fact, that's totally dead. Let go of the switch, full range, and we get it back again. Push the button. silence. Okay, so uh, I am still not as far as the AR-500. There it's dead. In fact, it's probably unbound now. It has. Okay, here's the drill. There's my setup. Okay, I'm using the 10-foot receiver first. Loss of signal. When the transmitter gets shot off, the signal alarm comes on. Transmitter back on. When it relocks, get an idea of the distance. I'm gonna put this. Okay, 15% to zero. This is how far we get before we lose the signal. The red bucket, that's the transmitter. Okay, of course you could hardly ever, you could never fly an airplane that far, but that's pretty good. Let's go try the other receiver. Binding, transmitter on. Okay, all bound. Get the transmitter put in the can. Okay. So one and a half miles, I mean, 1.5 can't so it's a three now, so we'll see how far we get this time. Up on where I locked the floor by this white box on this pole. Okay, I'm at it now. I'm at it now. Still going. Not a lot of any range. Still going. I think that's a lot of range. Okay, I'm locked the range. Good. Okay. Where we lost the range, that is way down there. That's way better than the other receiver. Uh, you'd never be able to fly that far. Back to get the bucket here. That white box right there is where I lost the first one, right here. And it's down by that sign. You can barely see it, but you can't imagine flying an airplane that small that far away. And here we are. Yes. <laughs> Transmitter off. I'm going to turkey baster all my receivers this way now that I know the formula. And if you can't even get two feet from the can, then don't even bother to fly it because the interference will eat you up in the air.